Welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about, you will bring about. everyone and welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host Lori LeBay and I'm thrilled you can join us today. We're going to have a great conversation talking with the Alls authors and how they are changing dementia care one word at a time. For those of you that are new to our show, Alzheimer's Speaks is about sound information, not just sound bites. We like to talk to real people in the trenches, making things happen, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. And if you think you have a story to share, please reach out to me. I would be more than glad to talk to you, even with the, the frog in my throat with my allergies here. So you'll have to bear with me a little bit today. Now, before I introduce our guest, I just want to give a big shout out to Dementia Map. If you're not familiar with it, it's our resource directory, which is global and has 150 different categories that you can search for wonderful resources, products, and tools that can support you if you are living with dementia, if you're a family member, if you are a professional, an advocate, or a friend. So go to Dementia Map and please check that out. If anyone is looking to join a support group, I do do a memory cafe called Arthur's Memory Cafe. And on the second and fourth Wednesday, we start at 1 p.m. Central. So that would be 2 o'clock Eastern, noon Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific time. We are doing that virtually thanks to Arthur's Senior Care and uh, their sponsorship And we meet at, uh, again, in the afternoon, the second and the fourth Wednesday. You're more than welcome to join us. I get to introduce our guest today, who I'm really excited to have with us. The authors do just such a wonderful job. And, you know, they really help support families and professionals alike, uh, providing uh, a variety of information from books to their podcasts. And we're going to get into all of that shortly. So first, I want to introduce you to Jean Lee. She is an author on the All Authors Group, um, as well as co-founder of the group. And her book is called The Alzheimer's Daughter, a memoir of both parents diagnosed with Alzheimer's on the same day. Jean, I still to this day don't know how you survived that, that process with both parents. But thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Lori. Thank you for all the work you do in the Alzheimer's area. Happy to be here. Wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce uh, some of your uh, cohorts here. So Vicki uh, Tapia is also a co-founder of All's Authors, and the book that she wrote is called Somebody Stole My Iron, a Family Memoir of Dementia, which really chronicles the journey with her parents, both diagnosed with dementia as well. So welcome, Vicki. How are you today? I'm doing great, Lori. It's nice to be here visiting with you again. I think this is not our first merry-go-round here. <laughs> no, no, it's it's wonderful to have you back in, and I can't wait to hear all that you've accomplished, um, just even in the last couple of years with, with COVID in place. But your group has grown, and it's just been really beautiful to see. So I'm going to go ahead and also introduce Mary Ann Chuko, uh, who is a, a, a co-founder, the director, and the podcast producer and host for all's authors and Mary Ann, if you don't know, is also the author of Blue Hydrangeas, an Alzheimer's love story. And that's a novel inspired by her work for caring for families impacted by dementia. So welcome, Mary Ann. How are you? Hi, Lori. I'm great. Thanks for having us all on the show today. 
Yeah, I'm really excited to to have you with us. I'm going to go ahead and and start with you for this first question, Mary Ann. I always, and you guys have all been kind of touched and stuff by dementia, but our audience likes a, a, a little bit more information, if you don't mind sharing. And the question is, have you been touched by dementia in your own family or circle of friends? Yes, Lori, I'm sad to say that I have. I had... Uh... Way back in the uh, 1990s, my aunt, my mother's beloved sister, she had Alzheimer's. So that was my first experience with that. And that was about the time that I went into nursing. So I had a lot of professional experience as well. But after I had written my book and um, founded All's Authors, my stepfather was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and placed in memory care. And I was his, you know, quote, unquote, person. And I was responsible for managing all of his uh, business and his needs. So that's how Alzheimer's touched my life. Okay, thank you for sharing. And Jean, how about you? Can you tell us a little bit more about your story? Uh, Boy, Lori, my sister and I began to notice changes in our both of our parents at about age 80. And it took until age 86 until we officially had a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. They were both diagnosed on the same day, which sounds like such a lot, but and it was. But it was not unexpected for us. We had been seeking uh, this diagnosis for them so that uh, we could move forward and uh, be proactive rather than reactive in keeping them safe. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. And it's so sad. So many people have such a hard time getting diagnosed. And six years is a long time to wonder what's going on, not just for the family members, but for those um, actually going through the process of, as well. And I can't wait until that day is changed. Thank you, Jean. Um, Vicki, how about, how about you? Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, your story? Sure, Lori. My parents were both both had dementia. My dad had Parkinson's disease for a few years, and it evolved into Parkinson's-related dementia. He was quite time-consuming for my mom. She took care of him, and I think this didn't help her at all after being awakened night after night after night by him needing to get up. Um, eventually... Things that she started doing were questionable, but I chalked it up to stress and caring for my dad, right? And it wasn't until probably oh, a couple of years into it that I realized it was probably more than just stress. And we finally, she was evaluated with Alzheimer's disease at that time. So um, like Jean, although not on the same day, both my parents were dealing with with some form of dementia, and um, they lived two hours away from me. It was um, a challenge, but eventually I got them in the same city as I I reside. So, um, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. uh, Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you. The the double whammy. There's not not that many um, people who are taking care of both parents at the same time with dementia, but... There's a lot more out there than we think there are as well with that. So I really appreciate you you sharing that with us. Marianne, I'm going to start out with you, if you don't mind, and maybe if you can catch us up on, you know, <clears throat> what's been happening to all the authors the last couple of years. What have you, what have you ladies been doing? We've been really busy, Lori, with this project that was supposed to last from one month back in 2015, and here it is. 2022, and we're celebrating our seventh anniversary coming up next month. We are now uh, have more than 300 authors and more than 300 books in our collection, which you can find at allsauthors.com, and um, had ventured into the podcast arena back in November 2020 during the pod- pandemic. Um, we just thought it would be a great way to get our message out with our authors to do the audio program so we've been doing now for about a good year and a half and we have 63 episodes out there and have won a couple of awards 
So we're really excited about that. We just recently partnered with the Health Podcast Network, who has dozens of different podcasts on various topics. Not too many on Alzheimer's. They have ours. But they also um, have invited us to collaborate with them on a mini-series on Alzheimer's and dementia. So many of our authors are involved in that or being interviewed for that program. And um, we've been busy doing virtual events as well. So we thought that might be a great way to get our stories out there. So we've had two already. One was on um, with five authors who actually live with the disease themselves, which happened last June and is available on our YouTube channel. It's called Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Living with Dementia But Were Afraid to Ask. And that has some really amazing content and information for people who might be wondering what what is it like for my loved one to actually live with this brain disease. They gave us a lot of insight. And we did another one on um, in February, which was called Love Stories, Keeping Romance Alive in Dementia Care. And we had four of our authors who are caring, currently caring for loved ones in different um, situations talk about how they managed to keep that um, little spark of romance or what makes their loved one special alive, even in the throes of dementia care, which sometimes that is something that can get lost, we find. And we have another one coming up next month in June called When Dad Has Dementia, and we're going to be talking about caring for your father with dementia. So we went from focusing primarily on the written word on books and blogs into more of uh, audio content and then a video content. We've also included new podcasts um, as our resources, as all the authors, and we have um, a couple of films that are coming up, or, or one we've already introduced. So we're kind of moving into different media because we know that caregivers, they may not always have time to sit and read a book, but we do want them to get our information, so we're trying to provide it in as many ways as we can. You had mentioned films, I thought, and exactly what are you doing with films? Are you making films? Are you screening films? Yeah, no, we we are (laughs) certainly not making films. That goes beyond anything we could even think about. But we are working with people featuring their films on our platform. So we started with um, Susie Singer Carter's film, My Mom and the Girl, uh, which is based upon a true story with Susie's mom and – starred Valerie Harper in her final performance. It's a 20-minute film that has a really positive message. So um, Susie is our first, and we're also working with um, Frank Silverstein, who did a 15-minute short film based on both of his parents living with dementia called Lousy, Love in the Time of Dementia. I believe that's the title. And he's coming up on our blog in June, and um, we're also working with another author, uh, another filmmaker, uh, Daphne Ferrier Glover, who did the documentary Spent. And then mm-hmm. there were a few others bubbling up there. But um, we're hoping maybe we can do a film festival over the summer and, you know, have have it available to anybody who wants to come, just not only watch the films, but then also have like a Q&A session with the filmmaker. Oh, cool. That sounds really neat. Well, thanks for clarifying yeah. that. Really appreciate that. Um, Jean, I'm going to throw the next question to you, and that is um, if you can share um, some of the, the progress you've made towards, you know, realizing your dream here and your vision to kind of lift the silence and the stigma um, regarding Alzheimer's and other dementias. Well, Lori, when we came together, Vicki and Marianne and I in 2015, we had no idea that we'd still be working together seven years later and growing by leaps and bounds. Now that we have, you know, our books, we we continue to be focused on our books, but we have the podcast and the virtual events grown to over 300 authors writing posts for us and par- participating in our podcast. Um, they... All of our books, uh, blogs, films, anything we look at, our criteria is that the person who has created this resource has to have had some kind of personal experience with Alzheimer's and dementia. 
um, either by being a caregiver or living with memory impairment. Um, the books that we feature, the people that we feature, um, are written as memoirs of daughters and sons, spouses and partners, memoirs written by grandchildren. We've got caregiver guides for all types of dementia. We feature fiction, uh, which models situations in real life. We have books for children and teens, and we have poetry book, uh, books, um, art books, quick reads, um, all of those written from personal experience. And I think all of that over these seven years has definitely tr tried to lift the goal tried to lift the stigma of Alzheimer's and other dementia, dementias. And we are right now, uh, so many people are coming to know us that we're now as the first of, at the first of May booked into August. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, another thing that I'm very excited to tell you about, another way that we are lifting this silence and stigma is we've always had the goal of taking these books that live on our website and link to Amazon. We've always had the goal of putting these books in the hands of real people in real places for real people in real places. And we've, um, we've developed something called Custom Caregiver Collections. We've had a generous donor, Paulette Sharkey, one of our authors, who has enabled us to prototype 10 of these custom caregiver collections, which we're trying to place throughout the United States uh, kind of as a test run on these. And they come in a beautiful handmade shelf that holds 15 to 20 of our real books. And they will be in memory cafes, at the entrance to memory care facilities, um, used for support groups in doctor's offices. Um, and that's just so exciting to us because we feel like many people who need our books may not really live online like we do. They are in and out of a memory care facility or they're grasping to find a support group. And we feel like these real books in real places for real people in these little lending libraries gives them support, a book they can pick up and read, return, take another one. And in support groups, they can pick up these books, read them, and have discussions about how this book affected me or how this person's journey m mirrors their own. So that's a new oh. initiative that we're really excited about. Oh, fantastic. Wonderful. Um, Vicki, do you have anything to, to add to that? In a more general sense, I'd like to say the story that we're able to share one story at a time. The, each story that we share, there's more people out there talking about that story and they connect with each other, and then they realize they're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, the more we can change the language in our discussions of the word dementia, um, removing some of the, la the language that just increases the stigma, but the more we can use different wording and what, what it actually means, I mean, all, all these things are going to contribute to help us realize our vision. Oh, exactly. Yeah. That's, it's fantastic. It really is exciting to see how much you guys have expanded and how, how large you're getting because you, people need help all over and there'll never be, there'll never be enough of us to reach everybody, but it's really nice to see the expansion there. Um, Vicki, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the three of you? I know that you guys, my understanding is that you met um, virtually back in 2015, and here we are in, in 2022. And I, I believe you're kind of situated around the country here. Uh, how do you guys, you know, work together and move forward and, and push these goals out? It's just kind of incredible. 
Thank goodness for virtual. I I know that neither none of us, none of the three of us, had any conception that we would still be together seven years later. We united to pr- promote our books in 2015, and one thing led to another. When you have great visionaries like Marianne and Jean, I'm not surprised that, that this has happened. Um, I have to credit technology. It's really made our journey together easier. Uh, we can actually see each other, something that 15 years ago probably wouldn't happen. Um, mm-hmm. we, and we have a communication network through Slack. Um, it Really, I have to say technology keeps us connected. Um, if it's Wow. The reason we're still together is because of our shared passion for our vision. Um, there's power in numbers. I think what we've accomplished together is something yeah, I seriously doubt that we probably would have been able to do on our own to mm-hmm. keep each other going. I think, you know, our acquaintance began with as that an acquaintance, but soon turned into a type of friendship, a virtual friendship, I guess you would say. And from there, it became a sisterhood uh, of like-mindedness. If we know that, that we've helped ease the journey for even one caregiver, whether it's an author that we have filed or a reader that found our book, we've helped make a difference, I like to believe, in that one caregiver's life. And there's such satisfaction for us in being able to connect dementia authors with readers. We, we're all in this together. Nobody nobody walks the walk alone. That's so true. And when you say, you know, when you help one one caregiver or care partner or care companion, whatever, or carer, depending on where you're located and what term you use, um, you're helping way more than just one person because it really is that whole ripple effect, you know, that, that pours out to family and friends and neighbors and and um, co-workers uh, because people's circles are, are way bigger than than what we believe they are and or what we've been told that they are, you know, with six or seven people are affected. Most families and extended families are are much bigger than that, you know, in and of themselves. So, yeah, I think it's really uh, such an important, important thing. Um, Jean, do you have anything that you want to add to that in terms of your relationship and, and how you all work together? Oh, gosh. You know, these two women, Vicki and Marianne, helped me through my own journey with my parents before they even realized it. I read their books, and that's how we connected. Um, I reached out to Marianne and said I loved her book. We reached out to Vicki. And books have power. Words have the power to save lives. And these two women, their books saved my life and made me realize I could get up each morning, breathe, and just walk and keep going. Um, And from that solid sisterhood, we have built something that was needed. And something that Vicki said, we, we use a virtual office space called Slack, S-L-A-C-K, and we work um, from Ohio and Montana and New York sitting at our own kitchen tables, but it is as though we are working in an office together because so many, numerous times per day, we are shuffling paperwork or ideas back to one another, and technology has allowed us to keep going and grow. Oh, that's that's wonderful. You found a platform to help, and and I love how you say, "Hey, they saved me," because you know what your you know what the outcome is to so many others that you are helping out there, um, you know, as you expand. So thanks thanks for adding that, Jean. Um, Mary Ann, how about you? Anything that you want to add about how the three of you uh, work together? I do want to um, let the listeners know that. Jean, Vicki, and I, we are the co-founders in the core at All's Authors, but we don't do this by ourselves. We do have other members to our management team. Um, Catherine Harrison, who helps with the website, and our creative director, and Ann Campanella, 
who is um, involved in the custom caregiver collections and our traveling libraries and does editorial work for us. And we also have Susan Landis, who does our graphic design work on our social media, and Roseanne Corcoran, who is also uh, a behind-the-scenes person and a podcaster on her own, who um, has helped us build our, our all authors shop online. So um, it might look like it's just the three of us, but we do have a team behind us, and there are several other volunteers as well. Um, everybody works for free. It's a passion project. We all we all give as much as we can, um, depending on what project that we're working on. And um, we have met in person on uh, two occasions. We met at a caregiver conference in Chicago back in 2018, and then we spent a beautiful week together in Naples, Florida in uh, November of 19 before the pandemic hit, and I know that um, Vicki and Jean have met each other a few times in between, And but uh, those times are joyous when we see each other. It's like the real books and real people and real places to see, you know, us in the flesh and to be able to touch and hold each other. It was really meaningful, and there's, there's nothing like that, but we've been able to not only build all the other stuff to forge a friendship and a sisterhood, like Vicki said, just using Zoom and social media and our little Slack app. Mm-hmm. So what we've done, caregivers can do the same thing and network with other caregivers and create their own support groups and their own systems as well. It's satisfying what? and it's good. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, maybe, Marianne, can you explain to us what what does it mean to be an all's author? You know, Lori, when I published my book back in 2013, I was told that um, I wouldn't get anywhere unless I had a platform. And I didn't know what a platform was, and I knew I didn't have one. But I did connect with another platform of authors um, at the time that were all supporting one another and helping each other grow and and get their books out there through social media and, and the Internet and other things. So it kind of dawned on me one day that, gee, wouldn't it be great to have such a network like that for people who had written books about Alzheimer's because, frankly, it's very hard to um, get your books out there on this topic. We could, None of us could really find publishers to take on this topic because it's just not a topic that people wanted to talk about or thought they could make any money on. So that was um, an uphill climb. And that's when I reached out to Jean because she had um, she had written to me telling me how much she enjoyed my book and one thing led to another, and the next thing you know, we had this platform. So our platform is now available to all of the authors that have contributed to our site. They all benefit from our branding, our brand, their association with all authors. They all get little icons that they can place on their books and on their social media or on their website that says, I am an all author or proud to be an all author. And it lets people know that their book has made the cut because we don't accept every book that comes our way. We have a very strict set of criteria that people need to meet in order to be considered to have their book in our collection. So to be in that group gives the authors who, for the most part, are obscure. They're caregivers. They've never written a book before. They will never write a book again. And they, in many cases, self-publish their work. And it is a quality work, or we wouldn't have taken it. But they don't know what the next step is. They don't know how to find readers, how to get their book out there. So we that's where we come in. We provide them with a platform so that they can launch their books and, um, you know, help us to reduce the uh, stigma that's associated mm-hmm. with a dementia diagnosis. Well, that's wonderful. Um Anything, uh, you know, Jean, that you want to add on to to what Marianne just said? Marianne, I think we're hearing some, like, paper scruffling around there. Um, Jean, anything you wanted to add? Well, your question, what it means to be an all's author, uh, an all's author um, I think it means to be a part of a community that you are not alone. And not, our community is not just made up of our authors. But it's made up of all of our readers and followers and our friends of all authors. And so it's not just the author that's not alone, but the author lets 
the reader and the follower know you are not alone through your journey. Many others of us have taken some part of this path and we can light the darkness of your path along with you. So I love that. I think that's so so beautiful and so important um, because I think when someone doesn't feel alone, that that in in and of itself changes the journey. Vicki, how about you? Anything you want to add to that question? I, I would like to add that once an author, always an all's author, we continue to promote our authors long past the time of their original posting date on our website so that they continue to be seen on our website. Um, Susan Landis makes wonderful graphics for authors, original graphics that um, a couple times a year that author is going to be profiled one more time as a pinned tweet or um, pinned on Facebook so that it's it's continuous, it doesn't end, and it, and it does give our authors a chance to connect with each other um, in a way that no one, a person who doesn't have that connection is unable to, um, you know, connect and meet with other people that have written books about dementia. Our our platform is a place where where people that have written these books are able to connect and meet and support each other. So I, I think it's an ongoing process. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Marianne, I'm going to go back to you, and I, I'm wondering if you can explain to us how All's Authors uh, serves dementia caregivers and other in, in the other concerns, you know, with, with various conditions. Lori, when I think about um, our ideal reader or our ideal caregiver, I think of a person, most likely a woman, who is, at the end of the day, finally sitting down with a few minutes to spare to maybe discover what, what can I learn about dementia? What, what resources, what can I find that's going to help me get through my next day? And maybe she goes on the internet and goes to Google and types in search, some search term, Alzheimer's for instance, or maybe she goes on Amazon and she looks there, maybe I'll find a book and is immediately overwhelmed with the numbers of resources that are, that are available. And that in itself is exhausting. You only have 10 or 15 minutes, and now you're in this rabbit hole of information, and you, you, it's overwhalling, and at that point you just shut down. With All's Authors, if you come to allsauthors.com, we have presented you with 300-plus titles of books that have all been vetted by caregivers. We can vouch for their value and the quality of, of the information you'll find, and we have classified them in our bookstore and on our website according to the dementia type and the situation. So, for instance, if you're caring for your mom and she has Lewy body disease, you will be able to find those books quickly that are on that subject. Or if you're caring for your husband and he has early onset or mild cognitive impairment, whatever your situation is, we've made it easy for caregivers to go in there and find exactly what they're looking for and maybe even find some other things that maybe they didn't even know existed or didn't even know that they wanted. So that's how we serve our caregivers through the, the book part of All's Authors. And then, of course, with the podcast and the virtual events, we give them an opportunity to tune in to a program and they can listen and um, take in the information. They can stop and start if they like because it's all you know recorded and um, listen to the stories and pick the information out that they think is going to help them and do it on the go. As you know, audio is a great tool and a great way to learn. And um, that's what we do. We, we just provide through personal, others' personal experience the information that they need for their own journey. Well, I think it's, I just think it's fantastic. I'm going to just see if Jean and, and Vicki want to say anything else. So, Jean, I'm going to pull you in first and see if there's anything you want to add to Mary Ann's answers about how you guys serve and, and connect people. Oh, I think Mary Ann just said it so well. So I'll leave it at her words. We, oh, we, oh. Can, we have so many resources for those. Um, who we, we share a journey with them. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. And Vicki, anything that you would like to add there? 
I have to agree with Jean. I think that Marianne covered it really well. Yeah, you guys are doing so much. It's just, uh, it's really incredible, and it's fun to see you expand. It's fun to see that the, you know, I still think so many people don't know that there's a lot more um, libraries out there that are, you know, creating these dementia-friendly sections out there too. Um, that they realize the need and what a great source. I know every time I talk to a group on that and I'm like, well, get the all's authors. That's going to be the easiest way for you to pick your books and get on target with all of this stuff. And, um, you know, the podcast that you have is, is absolutely fabulous. And I don't think we've mentioned the name of that, but it's Untangling Alzheimer's and Dementia. Uh, your website as a whole is so friendly and uplifting you know when you when you go to the site i think it just kind of calms the soul you know as a whole and i i just can't give you guys uh, uh any more any more kudos i mean i just think uh you're all three of you and the group at large is just so um so incredible and so welcoming you know you really pull people together to work together for the greater good and and there's so much to that. Vicki, is there anything else that you'd like to cover that we haven't covered? I'd like to invite people to, to visit our website and check out all the resources that you, that are available um, there. Uh, listen to a podcast maybe while you're at it and um, get to know us. We're, we're there to serve dementia, all forms of dementia, um, people that are experiencing it, people that are care partners for people with dementia. Uh, we're, we're, we have a whole section that, of authors that are live, currently living with dementia that have written a book about their experiences. Um, visit our YouTube channel and um, maybe watch the panel discussion we had with the five people that are living with dementia. It, it was eye-opening. It was an incredible experience. Um, there's, there's a lot there for you people. We just need you to come take a look at it. Yep. And when you come and visit, don't forget to share it with other people too. You know, what my saying is don't keep nuggets to yourself. You really need to, to let others know about it as well. Jean, how about you? Any any last thoughts that we should share before we wrap up? I think just a couple things that we haven't mentioned is that we really try to reach out and partner with other organizations in the Alzheimer's dementia space. And this summer we have a book club coming up with uh, HFC. And one of our authors, Christy Yates, is going to be moderating that book club. So watch for information on that. And Roseanne Corcoran, uh, a fellow podcaster um, through Daughterhood, is bringing us some messaging through Judy Cornish and her organization. Uh, she will be posting kind of, I envision it as a Dear Abby type of a mm -hmm. series, but it will be a Dear Judy kind of a thing where people can ask a question of our friend and fellow author Judy Cornish and she'll respond. Um, and I know Marianne would probably like to tell you about the new podcast platforms that we're appearing on as well. Okay, sounds good. I was going to go to her next. So, um, Marianne, I'm trying to get you back online here. Here we go. Um, do you want to expand? Sure. We are um, on the whole, whole Care Network. That's our home base. Uh, and if you visit the wholecarenetwork.com, you're going to find a lot of video, uh, a lot of podcasts that are dedicated to caregivers, not only just Alzheimer's and dementia, but for other um, diseases and disorders as well. So there's a wealth of information there. And then we recently partnered with the Health Podcast Network, which is even bigger than that and does uh, a lot of uh, podcasts with a lot of different diagnoses and even has like a nurse channel. I was interviewed on uh, one of the nurse channels, the Nurse Keith Show, but you'll find a wealth of information there if you like to listen. Listening is a great way to learn. I also um, want to just say something about our merchandise store. If you visit our website, allsauthors.com backslash um, shop, you'll find our store where we have all kinds of apparel and other 
little tchotchkes and things like that that feature the All's Authors logo. We uh, took some time building that. Our friend Roseanne Corcoran put that together for us, and that uh, is something we've wanted to do for years, so it's really great that we have that. And lastly, I just encourage people to visit the website, allsauthors.com, and while you're there, you have the opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter, and when you do, you will receive a free copy of our very first anthology, Alzheimer's and Dementia Caregiving Stories, but then every week you'll receive our email and we will get the information right away about upcoming events and how to sign up and who's the new author and who's the new podcast and other things that are going on all's authors. So um, stop by and pay us, pay us a visit. You'll be glad you did. Wonderful. Well, ladies, I just want to thank you all so much for joining us today on Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. And again, people can go to Alls Authors, that's A L Z Authors, plural, dot com, and uh, get that information. Again, you will you can spend a lot of time on their site. Um, it's just a fabulous, fabulous uh, tool, educational support, and in a way that you may end up connecting with others as well. So again, uh, go to allsauthors.com. And again, ladies, thank you for the tremendous work that you're doing and contributions in shifting our dementia care from crisis to comfort around the world. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Lori. Lori. Thanks, it was Lori. Really great being here. And in wrapping up again, I just uh, I, I just love the work that they are doing. I, I just think they add so much uh, to the dementia world as a whole. So much support and comfort. I can't say enough good things about this group. You won't be disappointed. In the meantime, you can always go to alzheimerspeaks.com or reach out to me at radio at alzheimerspeaks. Dot com and I would love to hear your story and maybe just maybe you'll be our next guest on the show here and again don't forget to check out Dementia Map bye everyone take care hey everybody Jared Sebesti your host of Retire Repurposed this podcast is dedicated to help people transition into fulfilling and purposeful retirements retirement is a big life change in fact the two most dangerous years of a person's life are the year they were born and the year they retire. Few people could just flip the switch from working a career 30 or 40 plus years retiring on Friday without methodical steps to living what we call a repurposed retirement. To listen now, search Retire Repurpose on your favorite podcast platform, Senior Resource, or Life Audio.